apologize for the slight delay. We had some technical issues that we had to work out, but they're fixed and we are ready and ready to go. As always, I am Mr. Kapow, which I say Count Palcula. <laughs> yep. Oh. It's all, I'm all about those puns. <laughs> Your voice of Toyzilla Live and by my side is Peggy Reynolds, our terror guide for the evening. Sadly, my co-host David's not going to be on tonight, mainly for the fact that uh, he's somewhere worse than hell. Jury duty. Yeah. Scary. But we will soldier forth, and as you can probably see, we are going to be talking about, well, one of our favorite holidays. Halloween. Wait, wait, I thought it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so about Halloween. We're talking about Halloween tonight. So, Halloween. I actually, I, I want to ask you this. Halloween, back in the day, as kids, got to be at least top three favorite holidays, at least, right? Oh, yeah. Getting to dress up in costumes and run around to strangers' houses for candy. Yeah. Only time you got to do that, ever. So, what do you remember most about Halloween as a kid? I got really into making my own costumes super young. And so I always looked forward to whatever I was going to make for the, like, the next year. And um, I think my personal favorite was when I was seven, I did Miss Frizzle. Made her all by myself, but that was always oh, it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then Scary well, Is movie. there photo evidence of that? Somewhere. I will find it, and I will <laughs> make my mom find it and throw it up for you guys. I was say, I, I wish you had it with us. I would love to have thrown that up. I didn't even think about <laughs> it <laughs> just now. My favorite costume had to be, like, I found this really scary, like, albino werewolf mask as a little kid. So I, my, my mom uh, found all these white furs at Joann's and, just, like, pretty much glued it on, like, some old lumberjack clothes. So I went as a werewolf for Halloween. Is there photographic proof of that? I think so. But, and it was also in elementary school Aww. where I was, I think, God, I was short as hell. I think it was, like, three feet, three feet. So I had a tiny little, like, little Asian werewolf. And you remember back in the day, those masks weren't th that good. <laughs> Get your tongue stuck in the hole? No, no. The, <laughs> it was, the eyes were like little slits. So I kept <laughs> running into trees and poles and other little kids. But you didn't get out of your costume. Nope. I was in the costume the entire time. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're also a cosplayer. Mm -hmm. Did... Your love of Halloween and costumes kind of stem from that fact, you think? I think definitely. It was an excuse to dress up any other time of the year other than Halloween. Um, and I'd always been going to conventions, so mm -hmm. it was just kind of like it was my second time to wear my costume for the year, and we got to go to the comic convention. Now, now as adults, I'm just wondering, because you have some really awesome costumes. Do you do you use your cosplay costume for Halloween, or do you any of your Halloween costumes for cosplay? I'm the worst. I don't dress up at all for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I'm so tired on Halloween that I just have a movie marathon and we carve pumpkins and hope trigger treaters show up. That sounds, that sounds fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. Oh, we have some folks in chat. Um, Andrew's waving hi, and we have uh, Dimitri saying uh, hi, guys. Been a while since I caught you all. Welcome back, Dimitri. And as you can see, we're talking about Halloween. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, we'll try to get them as soon as, po as, soon as possible. Just kind of keep them kind of PG-13. Because we don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> Basic slasher movie re rules. <laughs> mm -hmm. PG-13. So um, we have some actually some really cool toys up here. I want to talk about a couple. Actually, you brought something, some stuff. I did. I brought Let's talk about what you brought. This is my favorite. Okay. Your favorite. Ready? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Coolest toy That is awesome. <laughs> I got him at Think Geek years ago. Think Geek. She's my favorite. She's beautiful. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. But right now, rest in peace, thinking. Well, they're kind of still around. Oh, they or? got bought by GameStop. Well, they're absorbed in a GameStop yeah. now. So all the stuff that we have in Thinking is now sold at GameStop. Which is fine. I yeah. guess that's two dying companies that have found each other. Yeah. And earlier, we actually ha took you downstairs of uh, Toyzilla, which is located in Alhambra, California. Uh, to check out some of the wide selection of horror toys we had. We have, we saw yeah. we had a lot of horror toys. A ton. It was hard to just pick and choose mm. which ones. Let's talk about a couple of the stuff that uh, you picked out All here. Right. Which one would you like me to start uh, with? Let's start with this one right All here. All right. 
So, of course, not quite horror, but The X Files will always be probably some of the scariest well, television I've they ever watched. They have some, ho some Halloween specials, right? Great Halloween specials yeah. and just general good horror moments. Um, Agent Scully. Mm -hmm. Couldn't resist. And these are from the movies, so there's yeah. actual aliens involved. It's super detailed, and right? there's also a price tag on it, which is just it's just 12 bucks. Yeah, that's not bad it's at all. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all. It's just like her. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one that you kind of, kind of more modern mm -hmm. that uh, kind of caught your eye. There you go. This awesome black and white Pennywise. Yeah, it's a, it's a, they call that the, I think the concept edition. It's, Pretty much uh, released just uh, it's unpainted. This is what uh, they took the concept toy from. I think it's so cool. I love a black and white toy and just Pennywise yeah. without the color. And that's from Quite NECA, right. so super yes. detailed. Super duper detailed. I feel like it's more detailed than some of the animation in oh. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and not that bad price, too. It's only $65 for that super detailed toy. All right. And uh, you, know, this, you, 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 really, you were really excited when you saw I that. I was. So this is dumb. This is the scariest movie I ever watched when I was a kid. Casper! Casper. <laughs> friendly Ghost. <laughs> I remember watching it when I was a kid at a sleepover, and it scared me so bad because I felt bad because it was a little boy. And so I went and watched the older sister's movie, which was Friday the 13th. Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead, that was not as scary. Did, did Casper as a human live up to your expectations? No, I no, guess. I don't no. know what I was expecting, but he, he was cute, little boy, I guess is what he was. I don't <laughs> know, I, I didn't feel he actually looked like Casper no. at all. I always were like, how did you end up this? <laughs> oh, uh, we have uh, Richard, Richard's in chat saying that his first costume as a child was Casper. I would have cried. <laughs> and, oh, I got to pick up uh, one one thing from the store. Yes. My, this is my pick from one of my favorite horror franchises. Mm -hmm. On Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. The famous Freddy's book. Glove. This one's actually super detailed. The prep rep replica, actually based off of uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. That's when they had a budget. Yeah. Kind <laughs> kinda. Of. Kinda. It looked I, better. I, I like the Dream Warrior because there was a character in it that was super into Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, right. So when he was in his dream universe, he was a freaking wizard. <laughs> that was awesome. Like, the wizard powers. And the whole story, premise behind that part three was, which each kid dead, the main girl gained their power. Yeah, it was really a fascinating movie. I I think it might be one of my favorite Friday the Thir or uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies just because of that that you got to experience yeah, yeah. a little bit better. I felt that you know what I'm gonna just jump right Let's into it. it. Uh, my this is one of my favorite horror franchises, Nightmare on Elm Street, which the first movie was just straight up slasher horror, right? Yep. Then every movie that came out afterwards were kind of like leaning more towards like comedy. They felt like they did that with a lot of those original slasher movies. Like, the further they got down the line, yeah, they were like, it just got ridiculous. I, I'll disagree with, that, with you when it came to um, Friday the 13th, though. That, that is true. That was just straight up horror. It kept, that's why I like that franchise. Yeah. Because it keeps its tone really well. Yeah. I gotta ask you this. What was your favorite kill? Like, either Nightmare or 13th? Oh, my gosh. I'll never quite get over Johnny Depp's death and the original Friday the 13th. Every time I watch that, like it, from just, the chest. it just brings me, or Nightmare on Elm Street, it just Nightmare brings me straight yeah. back to it. Sorry, yeah. I'm like so focused on Friday the 13th. <laughs> I just finished writing an article on Friday the 13th, you guys. Wait for it. <laughs> My favorite, I guess, would have to be from Friday the 13th mm -hmm. when Jason took the camper in the sleeping bag and just like smashed it in a tree. <sighs> A bunch of times. And actually, that was the edited version, too. You oh, no. Originally, they did it. He smashed that body into the tree like 10 different times. But I think they um, they had to edit it or they would have gotten like, an NC-17 rating. 
It would have jumped it that much. Yeah. Wow. Because that was, I guess, overkill. <laughs> I mean, it is. A little <laughs> but bit. It looked little cool. Bit. All right. Let's talk about, like, on subject of movies. Uh, one second. Producer Mello, are you ready with the... Uh, all right, cool. So, curious. Let's talk about horror movies. We're both horror fans. Mm -hmm. In fact, I actually, back in the day, not many people know this. They usually associate me with fashion, comic books, D&D, that kind of stuff. But I'm a huge horror buff because back in the day, I used to work at a video store, an indie video. When th this was one of the movies we had in the video store I worked at. VHSs. <laughs> I'm old. Oh, I love it, though. Did you steal that from work? or did that just No, I work? bought it. I, like, when they were selling all their VHSs, I get, I get half off. So they were so, being sold for a dollar, so I got it for 50 cents each. So I just bought out their horror section. Definitely yeah. worth it. So, if you were going to do a horror movie night on Halloween, what movies would you put up? Number one, Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat? It is the perfect Halloween movie, and I will go down on that ship. Okay. It is perfect. Okay. Um, let me think. You mean top, top five? How about let's go top five? five. Okay. Uh, Trick or Treat, a recent movie, The Conjuring, the first Conjuring. one, okay. still, I think, holds itself very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got to throw a horror comedy in there, so um, what do you think? Oh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Fantastic. Um, you, uh, let's see. You got to pick an Evil Dead. I like Evil Dead Two. Two. Okay. Okay. It's ridiculous. I uh, love it. That's that's usually what people usually pick in the Evil Dead franchise. Yeah. Oh, well, I do like Army of Darkness though, but I can't ever get anybody else to watch it with me. <laughs> I'm down to watch it with you. And All we're right. going to watch it on the original, my original VHS yes. with the original ending. Yes. Please, mm -hmm. let's do it. Oh, we have Quentin Chat up saying, what's up, pal? My first costume was a Tweety costume when I was two years old. But one year, his dad made a uh, Batman cow for me, and he, was, and he had Batman PJs. Aww, PJs. That's awesome, man. That is fantastic. I love it when parents get involved. Yeah, in that's so costumes. awesome. Dude. I wish I had, like, cool, like, themed PJs as a kid. I never had those. I had, I just went with, you know, T-shirt and underwear. T-shirt and underwear. I had a lot of cat PJs mm -hmm. when I was young. That's what they had. My parents didn't believe in sleepwear. Oh. <laughs> it's like, here's a T-shirt and a pair of pants. Go my, to sleep. My grandma would always buy us PJs for Christmas, and that is whatever it was. All right. My, from my horror movie picks... First of all, we're all going to watch it on the original VHS. All right. Okay, Required. because I feel I feel there's kind of a, when you get those uh, you know, VHS lines and everything, it's something that we add something to it, add something, especially with horror movies. Yeah, the grainy mm -hmm. quality of it. First, the first one I'll pick is the original first Evil Dead with, uh, directed by Sam Raimi. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Then this is, this is the next one is a horror movie I feel is so underrated. Night of the Demons, directed by Kevin S. Tenney. It, the main like monster in that film is basically female Freddy Krueger, played by uh, Milia Kin Kincaid. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's so an underrated horror movie, and they actually spawned a bunch of uh, sequels, too. The sequels were kind of crap, but the first one was really, I enjoyed. It, was, it had that horror campiness of the 70s, of the 70s and 80s, and a little bit of 90s. It was actually, it's, uh, 80s and 90s. Most of my horror movies are 80s and 90s because I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. And those were really a golden era. If you yeah. can't go back to the slashers of the 70s. Like. Yeah. The 90s, they still kind of had it, but when we get in the 2000s, then it, shit kind of got real. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Yeah, it was like back. Saw, Hostel, and everything. The original Saw is great. Don't ask me to watch any of the others. All right. <laughs> then next one, I will be uh, The 13 Ghosts with Steve Beck. Uh, mainly for the fact that that one I might throw the DVD version on, mainly for the fact that I love the special edition where it gave the backstory of each of the 13 ghosts. Yes. I always wish they uh, they did like a, they would do like a TV spe uh, series or or another movie that kind of went into, kind of a prequel movie that went to each of the history of the, each of the ghosts. I'd watch a 13 episode miniseries on that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it has to be 13. Right? Yeah. 
And I know that we talked earlier, you actually did a really cool 13 Ghosts, original 13 Ghosts event. Yes, uh, I would do work with a group called Gula, the Ghost Hunters of Urban Los Angeles, and the uh, creator of that does these great like haunted movies and haunted places. Yeah. And so we did the original 13 Ghosts with, and 13 Ghosts, for those of you that don't know, you have two different options to watch mm -hmm. it. You can watch it like the Scaredy Cat way and see none of the ghosts, or you can use the ghost viewer, and so it's a 3D movie, and you can move back and forth, and we recreated the original 3D design. It was really fun. Oh, oh, that sounds awesome. You I would love them to bring that back, maybe show at the Egyptian or something. Oh, yeah, I am pitching it so hard. The yes. uh, 3D glasses were really expensive, though, so if anybody wants to foot that bill. So fans out there, get a Kickstarter, let people know you want this to happen, and then hire Peggy here. I got you guys. Uh, the next one would be uh, the, sh the movie that the shirt I'm wearing, <laughs> Reanimator. Oh, yeah. Reanimator, Stuart Gordon. Uh, based off of a story by Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because the copious amount of blood and gore. It's all, like, the, if it's over the top in blood, I'm okay with it. If it's a little bit less, I'm like, I don't know This was that, like this cartoon, like cartoony amount of blood and gore. ridiculous. This is exactly what you wanted out of an H.P. Lovecraft movie. Yeah. Yeah, this, um, I believe, uh, at, it's, at the time, it held the record for the amount of Fake blood news. <laughs> I wonder what the new one is. <laughs> you know what? Look, folks, Somebody look that, that up. up. Someone look that up and let us know in chat. And the third one, once again, it's another horror movie that's usually, people don't really talk about it, but I loved it. Rose Red. I'm cheating a little bit. I know it's a miniseries movie, but Rose Red, one of my favorite haunted house movies. I got to watch it because I've never seen it. Well, as I was telling you earlier, it's actually scripted by Stephen King, uh, directed by Greg R. Baxley. And story-wise, so it's not, I'm not spoiling it too much for it because I already told you it's a haunted house movie. Mm -hmm. it's, the story's kind of based off of the real-life Winchester house. So, you know what? I'll... Get a VHS player, a VHS player, and I will lend you my VHS copy right. of that. Okay. All right. I think I think I it's have two, one. It's two VHS VHSs. <laughs> In the stack. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what? Just because I can, I'm going to add an honorable mention. All right. This What's is a Japanese mention? horror movie, House. Yes. Yes. Um, did you know that the director? I could, I'm going to butcher his name. I'm going to apologize right off the bat. Nobukiko Abeashi. He actually had a like a conversation with his preteen daughter to get an idea of what to how to write house and it basically based off her own childhood fears and um, she said this children comes up children comes up with things that can't be explained compared to stuff that adults when they come up with stuff it's stuff that can be explained or scary but when children come up with stuff, it's stuff that can't be explained. It's, that is true. Mm -hmm. And it also includes some really super trippy special effects. Such great special effects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I found the the most fake blood. Oh, okay. Oh. What is it? What according is it according to Bloody Disgusting, uh -huh. Evil Dead 2013 remake shattered the fake blood record on Ooh. film. The previous record was held by Dead Alive, Dead using, Alive? Which, oh, yeah. which used 1,000 gallons of fake blood okay, on the entire I, film. Now I have to know that how many sense. gallons did the Evil Dead use. The Evil Dead remake used 50,000 gallons of blood for <laughs> just a single scene. And I think I know what scene. <laughs> I was thinking I know that scene. Yeah. It, was at, it was at the very end when it started raining blood. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, that was probably that. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood. And with that, we're gonna, let's transition to, uh, let's talk about hauntings. Okay. Like, I, was gonna, cause I was actually going to transition from haunted house to hauntings. You actually do a uh, paranormal like, tour, right? Yes, I am a paranormal historian. Mm -hmm. um, I specialize in L.A. ghost stories, so I do host tours, usually free or very cheap, throughout Los Angeles throughout the year. Very cool, very cool. Did uh, I know you did a couple this month. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually kind of curious. What are kind of, so, don't don't spill everything, but once, what, can you tell us about one of your favorite haunted spots? All right, one of my favorite haunted spots out here in LA 
It's not on any of my tours, and you actually can't visit it anymore, but it is by far my favorite place, Linda Vista Community Hospital. Mm. A lot of ghost stories out here are centered around celebrities. This is a hospital that was haunted because it had such a high death count. It was mm. in between two rival gang territories, and basically every person that died there haunts there. Oh, dang. It is very violently haunted. That's one of the few places I've ever been to that I actually got scratched at. Um, and it is just, the main story there is that of a surgeon who lost his patient. It was a gunshot wound patient. The surgeon uh, lost the patient on the operating table and when he left that day, the, uh, the poor patients, um, the gang was standing outside waiting for the doctor and they killed him. Wow. He still haunts wow. that surgery room. Wow. Now it's an old That's folks home. I kind of feel sorry for those old folks then, but <laughs> especially the fact that they're at the, you know, the end of their... In the worst <laughs> way. Yeah. Don't put your grandma up there, guys. Do some yeah. research. Yeah. You know what? I kind of want that story now, like oh haunted old ho folks home. I've been trying really hard to get a hold of somebody who put their, like, grandparent up there. So I can just, no, I want all to talk right, to so your grandma. All right, everybody okay. out there, if you know somebody who put their grandparent in that home, hit up Peggy. She wants to, she, she, she wants to interview you. I will definitely be down to interview you guys, please. <laughs> actually, you know what? I actually grew up near actually a pretty haunted area myself. I actually still live near that area. I, have you heard of uh, Turnbull Canyon? Yes, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. I don't really get a whole lot out of the city, but just kind of that it, that it is a haunted place is mostly what I've heard. Yeah, it's uh, we have it's one of those places where there's also a lot of false stories that yeah. surround it as well, a lot of folklore stuff like a um, was it a a lost mental asylum, a uh, let's see, a gateway to hell, there's Indian a lot of those out burial here. ground. Uh, see, there was also UFO sightings. Like, oh, you got the all, whole nine. Yeah, you get all of them. Too, all like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have all that stuff. I will admit, I have driven up that hill at night. It's kind of spooky, but for me, it's kind of spooky meaning for a fact that you're up high up on the hill and some areas don't really have the guardrail. Oh, so you're like, it's scary. That's why I'm scared. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to drive off. Not, I don't want to see in a ghost. In, in dark, there's no lights at all. Oh, no. Yeah. And also, it's kind of weird. At the top of that mountain, there's kind of an infestation of peacocks. How? I don't know. I, I've, I've seen like five peacocks at one time up there. That's, that's probably it's scarier like, than yeah, any Yeah, it's ghost. like just wandering around. Oh, I'd be scared there. I'm sorry. Peacocks are aggressive. No, thank you. All right. Let's, uh, let's get back to... Uh, let's, go, let's move on from real All horror, right. and let's go to... Uh, well, made up horror. Okay. Let's go. Let's uh, kind of cleanse our let's cleanse our palate with a little bit of uh, what's your favorite horror like Halloween special on TV? Halloween special on TV, the Halloween Town movie. Halloween Town movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love Debbie Reynolds so much. Did you know that the, all the Halloween Town movies are all going to be on Disney Plus? I did. I don't know if I'm going to go for Disney Plus though. It's well. Find somebody who has Disney Plus and share it. Then I will. I um, yeah. Halloween Town is always my favorite. I got the pleasure of working with uh, Kimberly J. Brown oh. at a Midsummer Scream. I run the kids mm -hmm. area, and she's written a kids book called Mr. Poppins Pumpkin Patch, and it was it's a cute little book. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, one of my favorite has to be uh, classic, Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I feel very, I, I associate myself with Charlie Brown. I'm still waiting for my you know, good man Charlie Brown moment. I feel life is kind of like Lucy and she just keeps moving that damn football. You want a true crime Charlie Brown fact? Yes. So the original voice of Charlie Brown just got out of prison. Uh, he apparently had recently sent a bunch of death threats and aggressive messages to people. So he spent four years in prison. He's out now. Wow. Well. Now you know what? We that. actually, last show, we had the second voice of Charlie Brown on our show. This is, <laughs> we did not discuss this earlier <laughs> at all. <laughs> this, yeah, if you want to catch uh, the se our uh, show with the second voice of uh, Charlie Brown, it's on the Nirvana Facebook page. How to, this man, he was not in prison. He's a very nice man. <laughs> 
He did a signing here at Toyzilla. I'm sorry, I just ruined Charlie Brown for everybody. <laughs> this is the first boy, not the second. <laughs> uh, let's see, other horror, uh, Halloween specials. Uh, are You Afraid of the Dark on Nickelodeon? Yeah. Loved it. Loved, Loved it, it as a kid. You heard they're bringing it back. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that with a whole new cast and everything. A whole new cast with the original show and DJ McHale's coming back. Oh, wow. I'm really excited. It's already back. I think there's like a couple episodes up. Oh, oh what? Cool. Yeah. One of my favorite thi- things that I always wondered as a kid was what was that powder they threw in the fire? And I only recently found out what it was. What is it? It's non dairy creamer mixed with glitter. <laughs> 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 so, folks, if you want to do that sp- special effect, Non dairy creamer and glitter. It works. Never thought Just that don't do that. Don't do that on your stove, because well, it's not going to go well. Trust me, experience. Because you shouldn't do it in California at all right now. Guys. No, no, not not at all. Not right now. Not right, not right now. Not right now. Okay. Oh, Dorian's saying that uh, Rose Red was awesome, and uh, it, he watched it back in high school. Nice. Hmm? <laughs> so see, we, me and Dorian, we know, we know, we know. I'm behind. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Tony's saying hello. What's up, Tony? Uh, let's see. Quentin jumped in saying that uh, his dad is a very artistic guy, and he was very musically talented, and his art was just awesome. Fun fact, his, da- his uh, dad's favorite artist was Steve Ditko from Spider-Man. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. I love nerdy parents. Yeah. Uh, and also, this was more of a movie, but it kind of counted as special because the budget. Okay. Ernest Scared Stupid. Yeah. I loved Ernest Scared. That's my favorite Ernest movie as a kid. I love it. I also want to give a shout out to every Bob's Burgers Halloween episode. Yes. They are all phenomenal. Yes. Treehouse of Horror, y'all. Treehouse, yes, Treehouse that's, a horror, that's a classic. That's a classic. Fun fact, did you know that the creature effects in Ernest Scared Stupid was actually done by the Kyoto Brothers, who did uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, they, I think they actually reused some of the clowns for the trolls in that movie. I got to rewatch yeah, it you now. Yeah, need, you need to rewatch. That's I don't think I've seen it awesome. since I was it's a kid. so awesome. It has Eartha Kitt in it. <laughs> love that Love that horror movie. Well, it's not, I said, it's, it's a horror comedy. Horror comedy. Which is amazing. Yeah. And honestly, some of the best horror recently. <laughs> and uh, because we are actually a toy show, I think we should actually start talking a little bit more about toys, right? All right, let's bring okay. it. Um, NECA this month actually released a bunch of really awesome horror-based toys. Uh, we have, uh, if uh, producer Mello could put up the Decker from Nightbreed. He's the one that wears, uh, he's the guy with the, the suitcase. suitcase. The suitcase guy, yes. Put that up there. Yeah. Ooh, from NECA, gorgeous. from Clive Barker's Nightbreed. You've seen yeah. that movie, right? Yeah. Eight inches and fully posable. Comes with uh, knives and the briefcase and also custom art packaging. It's actually available right now for $32.99. Oh, wow. There is. I, I've heard some complaints about it, though. Um, the hands don't really hold the prop sort knives very well. Mm-hmm. But still, that toy looks It looks gorgeous. Awesome. NECA always does some really awesome stuff. Like I said, this one's from NECA. This it figure is from NECA. I have some Evil Dead ones from NECA oh, that man. I really liked. Yeah. Yeah, next one, can you put up the Toonie Terrors? It's the ones a bunch of toys from horror movies there for us. Yeah. yeah. So cute. From, this is more of a cartoony version. It's from NECA featuring Michael Myers from Halloween 2, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Pinhead from Hellraiser, and Chucky and Tiffany from The Bride of Chucky. I want that Pinhead. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's, there's six inch figures, and the package is also acts, doubles as a diorama backdrop. Aww, cute. Uh, I, th- I believe uh, right now they're selling Leatherface. Pinhead and Michael Myers as a trio pack for $38.99. Wow. And Chucky and Tiffany is a two pack for 20 bucks. How tall are they? Uh, six. Six inches. Wow. Really awesome. Yeah. Okay, next up, can you put up the, as you say, you love the Trick or Treat movie? Love Trick or Treat. They actually released Trick or Treat, the Sam figure. Oh, I love yep. that. Uh, this is actually, it comes with a removable burlap sack mask. So you, they actually, I love how the fact that they actually did like 
the monster yeah. face for Sam. You don't see a whole lot of that yeah. with his face. Uh, it comes with a treat sack as well. It's also burlap and a half-eaten lollipop. Better come with that lollipop. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. <laughs> Thirty dollars and ninety nine cents. All right, I'm getting that That's when I get home. Super, super worth it. It's available right now, I believe. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, then we have uh, another it figure. This one's actually it chapter two. The it figure from chapter two. Specifically. Yeah, the Pennywise Ultimate figure. It's from NECA. Seven inches. It features a new body sc uh, sculpt that's different from this one. He's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. Uh, comes with four interchangeable heads, interchangeable hands, and a balloon. They haven't released a price on that yet, but it's supposed to be uh, released in March of 2020. And because so detailed and everything, I'm guessing it's going to be about this price. Yeah, the $60 yeah. range. $60 range. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, if uh, Bruce Mello Mike could put up the Conjuring figure. Yeah. You like the Conjuring series? I like the first one. No, well, the we'll nun. Do that. We'll do that. We have this nun. We have the nun. We'll talk about the nun. Uh, this is uh, this one's actually not from NECA. This is from Mezco, it's from the designer series. Uh, six inches from the Conjuring. Eight points of articulation and two swap out facial expressions. This one's set to be released between May and July 2020. Thirty three bucks. Not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not a horrifying bad. face. Yeah, and can you put up the second, uh, crooked, uh, the second, the one with Crooked Man? Crooked Man. Is that yeah. the one with the red suit? Yeah, the one in the suit and the hat. Yep, it's the Conjuring Crooked Man Ultimate Figure from NECA, seven inches, three interchangeable heads, removable hat, umbrella, and a Zoetrope toy. Zoetrope. Zoetrope toy. This one, no price on that yet, but it's supposed to be released this year in early December. Is that the spinning shadow thingy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice, nice. It was one of the few good scares in that movie. Yeah, it was the Crooked yeah. Man. All right. Let's, let's jump in the chat really quick. Uh, oh, Quinn saying that uh, he watched the Dracula films from the 30s. His favorite is Dracula with Bela Lugosi and daughter of uh, Dracula with Gloria Holden. Fun fact that the uh, English version and the Spanish version of Dracula were shot at the same time. The Spanish version with Bell, like the Bell Lugosi. The Spanish version was shot at night, so it actually looks oh, way think, better. Oh, I think I think a new fan, Quentin, saying that you look like the goth sister he never had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? With that, let's. Uh, do you want to play a game? Always. We're gonna, we're gonna play a game. It's kind, we did it a couple times before on the show. It's kind of like Mad Libs. You're familiar with Mad Libs, right? Yes, I am. Here we go. Got here. Okay here let's create paranormal pixies horror flick okay here so let's go with let me get you a marker here we'll just use my head <laughs> as to hold it up okay all right for your prota your list of protagonists okay. who do you want uh, in your horror movie to be your protagonist my protagonist could it, be, it could be one person it could be multiple people who do you want to be? Hmm. Oh my gosh, this is actually difficult. There's so many protagonists to choose from. Does it have to be somebody specific, or can I just like? You could go like Jock, I, Nerd. Okay. All right. Uh, my favorite protagonists are always cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. They scream a lot, and it's fun. Okay. Oh, you. Uh, like, it's, a, it's a sticker. It's a sticker. Yes. What? Yeah, we spare no expense. I, I, I go to a dollar store. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is the back. I wrote on the wrong side. Okay. <laughs> Here. Now I have other stickers. I'll mm -hmm. be careful. All right. <laughs> then we have uh, who's going to be our antagonist? Who's going to be our monster, our slasher? Could be anything. Anything. Could be a ghost. It could be uh, a Freddy Cougar. It could be zombies. Um, it could be the government. The government? No. Okay. Uh, let me think. I'm trying to think of something funny because I want to see, and I'm going to butcher this. Make sure I'm writing on the right side now. I was not. I want to see a group of cheerleaders go up against Chupacabra. Chupacabra! I'm making a horror comedy, you guys. All right. 
I always feel, um, especially these days, they're doing, they're going, like, like Stringer things are going back in the day, different eras. Like, what is going to be your era of uh, this movie? So in order to have a, I feel like a solid horror movie, you cannot have cell phones. So you have to go back before okay. cell phones. Um, I'm going to give mine, let's see. Do 60s. There's not a whole 60s. lot of 60s. All right, all right. All set in the 70s. So we're going to have a bunch of uh, hippie cheerleaders. Hippie cheerleaders. No, they're going to, like, the hippies are going to be like, there's chukacabras, and the cheerleaders are going to be like, no, there's not. <laughs> Let's go with uh, setting. Is it going to be like a mental asylum? Is it going to be a ranch? Is it going to be a Turnbull Canyon? Turnbull Canyon. <laughs> um, no, it is going to be set at a comic convention because I'm going there. Oh, comic book convention. What are these cheerleaders doing at a con? They're being chased by chupacabras. <laughs> it's where the climax ends. I see this is a direct-to-DVD movie. Definitely. <laughs> all, all great horror Most Most horrors are. Are direct-to-DVD these days. All right. Next up, um, how would you say the first first death is going to go down? The first death. Okay. Because you got to have somebody that is being found dead, right? Mm -hmm. So the first death has to be, let's say... The biology teacher, because then that rules out the biology teacher from helping us. <laughs> and how does the biology teacher go out, though? He's drained of his blood by the chupacabra. Oh, okay. Well, you know, sometimes they have, uh, you know, the, the 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 red herring, the death. red herring, or you know, the, ch the chupacabra could you know, chase him into like an empty pool or something, and he falls down. They're gonna be drained of blood and they're gonna think it's the goth kids at first. Oh, okay. Because I was of the era where the goth kids were blamed for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we always gonna need a final girl. We need a final girl, a survivor. All right, Who's gonna be survivor. the final girl? And the final girl doesn't have to be a girl either. I'm just using the term final girl. It's not. Yeah. My final girl is gonna be the only boy on the cheer squad. Oh. Final boy. Yep. What are they called? The, like, the, the people who lift the girls, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're cheerleaders still. They're male cheerleaders. Yeah, they're male cheerleaders. Yeah. Bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. That's just a big twist, too. I don't think a male cheerleader ever survived in the horror flick. Uh, I don't even think male cheerleaders existed in the 60s, so I'm going all yeah. over. All right. And, of course, we need an actor to play that final boy. Oh, boy. We need, we need a name to, put, to you know, sell... Put the butts in seats. Put the butts in seats. All right. Who's putting the butts in seats? So who days? in the 60s? In the 60s <laughs> would put butts in seats. I don't it's, Is it the 60s? I want to write James Dean, but I don't know if he was. The, he died. He's 50s. He's 50s. in the 50s. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was dead by 50s. 60s. Oh, my God. I can't even think of a 60s hero right now. I'm so bad. Anybody got one? Adam West. <laughs> oh, my God. Adam West. 60s Actually, Adam West? Yes, please. I would have. That's him in his prime. Adam West as my male cheerleader who survives the Chukacabra battle at the comic convention. Direct to DVD. All right. It's a classic. Let's go down <laughs> the list. Uh, this is Paranormal Pixies horror flick. Protagonists are a bunch of cheerleaders who are being chased by Chupacabras during the 60s, mm -hmm. set in a comic book convention, with the first death being the biology teacher who was drain of blood. People are blaming the goth kids on that. The final girl is actually a final boy who's the only boy on the cheer squad played by Adam West. I'd watch it. I bet it's in your VHS collection right now. Someone make this movie a reality right now. She gets writer's credit. <laughs> Spoken like true mm -hmm. Mad Libs. Oh, yeah. A, that was fun, wasn't it? That was fun. Make yeah, it to Ridiculous. Yeah, I love Ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Let's see the time. Oh, we are nearing the end of our show. Time just flies by, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, talking yeah. horror. Yeah. But uh, you know what? Let's talk uh, new toy news because it's, well, a toy show first and foremost. Absolutely. So, uh, Bruce Mello, are you ready for new toy news? Yep. All right. If we put up the Black Widow statue first. I know you're a Marvel fan. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're more of a DC I'm a fan. DC you're a DC fan. girl. You're a DC girl. But anyway, this we do have DC toys that we're going to talk about later. But this is a Black Widow statue from SciShow Collectibles. 
It stands at 4.5 inches tall, made of poly resin, featuring a sniper rifle on a theme statue base. Uh, there's actually two versions, a exclusive version that has an additional portrait head, set to be released in August to October of 2020. And uh, you're familiar with the game that we play here? Name that price. Name that price. All Let's right. go, we'll go with the reg How much do you think the regular okay. edition is going to be? Regular edition, it's sideshow. Mm. So I feel like... A little pricey. Yeah, like 150 175 More than not that? Not close. Not close at oh God, all. See, I'm the worst at this. 420 bucks. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Mm. What? The exclusive version is only $10 more expensive, which is 430 Yeah. Just so the, new, the, the head itself just 10 bucks more. That just shows you how it really costs. <laughs> All right, can we put up, uh, what well, is one of my favorite movies, uh, RoboCop. That's a good one. Yep, RoboCop. Solid. Another really bloody and gory uh, movie. It's the RoboCop, RoboCop bus from Chronicles Collectibles. It's actually one-to-one -one scale, so this is like oh my gosh. Alex Murphy, straight up, 30 inches tall. Comes with a specialized base, base as you see there, and they're only producing 200 of them. And it's going to be released on the second quarter of 2020. How how much do you think it is? Remember, this is one oh, to one. This, this is, is one to one. Now this is I'm like, actual person's okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to just body. toss out a huge number and go with three grand. Three grand? You're actually overshot it ah, this time. <laughs> this one's going to be one thousand three hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That's not that bad. Not I want to. If somebody buys that, I want to know where you put that in your house. It's going to be right there in. Like in their four air. It better be. Yeah. Or over the fireplace, maybe. It's too big over <laughs> the over bathroom. The bathroom. The bathroom. Yes. <laughs> Staring at yeah. you. Be uh, Robocop watches you pee. <laughs> I'd be like, I can't go to the bathroom here. I'm going to go to 7 Eleven. Your move, creep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Next up, we have uh, this one. You're, you're going to like this because you're a DC girl. Mm -hmm. You put the Batman. Batman. Yeah, this is the Batman Ooh. Task Premier Collection statue from Diamond Select. This is actually the Batman the Anime Series version. 11 inches tall. This is another limited edition one with only 3,000 produced. Comes with a numbered certificate of authenticity designed by Barry Bradfield and sculpted by Volnir Studios. Set to be released next year at uh, March 29th, 2020. Mm, I'm going to throw 250 out. 250? Okay, you're close. I'm you're close. a little close. You're a little close. I'm getting better at this. You're just a hundred dollars oh, over. Oh, of I am. This is one hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> That's what I like about the DC collectibles is they're never as expensive. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is some more Marvel toys. This is a new Marvel Legends wave. Put up the. It's a bunch of Marvel toys. A lot of Marvel toys. Yep. The they're all six inches tall. Uh, we have Spider-Man, Mar the Mark III costume, Spider-Man Velocity, Superior Octopus, Saint chi which I'm really excited to see, Asian representation in the Marvel Universe, uh, Vulture, and the White Rabbit. And the build-up figure uh, pieces that it uh, comes with is actually going to be the Demo Goblin, set to be released in January of 2020. Want to guess how much one of these figures can one cost? One of them? Uh, so you those, buy these at Walmart. Oh, so they're the cheaper line. Yeah. So like 35? 35? 35? A little cheaper. 25? Uh, 21.99. 21. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. And uh, next up, the la our last one. This is your last chance to... Uh, I'm so bad at this, you guys. All right, all right. Oh, the Barbie dolls. Yeah, the Barbie dolls. The X-Men, Storm, Dark Phoenix, and Mystique Barbies. They're released for the 80th anniversary of Marvel. Want to know how much... These are going to be okay. So, I actually used to collect Barbies, <laughs> like specifically yeah. these geeky ones, and they usually ran like in the 75 to 150 dollar range. So, so what's I'm gonna guess for these guys, 100 each. 100 each? Actually, these are quite affordable at 54 dollars oh, wow. and 99 cents. The prices have dropped. You don't want to know mm -hmm. how much I spent on the Speed Razor one. Oh, <laughs> I can only imagine. But uh, if you want any of these toys that we talked about tonight, they could if we don't have them in store. David is totally down to order them for you. Just uh, let us know, and we will put it in our order for you. And yeah, let's. Uh, we're going to close this off with. Uh, let's talk about some events that's going to come up. Uh, when can we see you next? Any events you want to promote? Um, I don't know.
don't actually have a whole lot of events going on right now. Um, I think the next thing that I'm going to be doing, I'm not sure the date, but Midsummer Scream, oh. the, the convention that I, I run the kids area for them, oh. and they always do a Christmas pop-up. Oh. Yeah, a Krampus thing Christmas pop-up. So that'll Very be the cool. next place you can Very see cool. me. Very uh, cool. We have an event that's actually coming up. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, Nerba has an event coming up this Thursday, actually, Halloween, the Halloween party. Do we have a graphic for that? Oh, that's right. I am going to be yep. there. Oh, I you're going to be there. Yeah. So uh, if you see me and Peggy here, you can buy us a drink. The Nerd Nights, only $10. It's Nerd Night Part 2. There's going to be live music, nerd karaoke, costume contests, drink specials, and gaming. It's going to be an awesome night. And uh, with each ticket, actually comes a free unlimited game card. So that's a super good deal. I love Nerd Nights. They're yeah. always so much fun. Let's see. Uh, then uh, convention-wise, we have uh, BlizzCon coming up uh, this upcoming weekend. Then there's also PMX, Pacific Media Expo, in, I believe, uh, let's see, I think it's Burbank uh, this year, I want to say, which is going to be uh, in uh, the following week. Then we have uh, one of my favorite conventions. Uh, I know Toyzilla is going to have a booth there, DesignerCon. Oh, I love DesignerCon. DesignerCon so awesome. Uh, then we'll see what else we have. Uh, Lost Con at the end of oh, November. Lost Con at the end of November. Oh, like there's for the TV show Lost? No, no, no. Oh. It's uh, Lost LOS. Lost oh, Con. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's an uh, older crowd, like sci-fi convention. Oh, and uh, also I believe uh, early November there's going to be a cyberpunk convention at the LA Convention Center. Oh, wow. They got a lot going on. So there's on. a lot. There's, we don't have an off-season anymore for conventions <laughs> at <laughs> all. No, yeah. no such thing as a break, you guys. All right. <laughs> Uh, so where can we find you all over the interwebs? All of my paranormal stuff is under the Paranormal Pixie. All of my cosplay is under the Peggy Reynolds. Awesome. I'm a big fan of the V. Any uh, cool. pro- other projects or anything you want to promote? Um, right now I'm working. No, I'm just keeping my paranormal stuff going. So if you want any haunted L.A. Keeping it I'm spoopy. Keeping it spoopy all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as always, you can find me on my Facebook page, which is kind of my central hub for all my stuff, which is facebook.com slash Michael Powell does stuff because, well, <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> then there's my uh, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter. I finally got my Twitter my uh, Twitter name. So, so the person sitting on it, let it go. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's all under Mr. Kapow. That's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. And you can also find me uh, as the, uh, on a Suit Up Geek Out. It's a men's fashion and lifestyle site. And I have a new project going up right now. It's on Facebook. It's called Aesthetic Retro. So, yeah, got a lot of stuff going on. So, until next time, be good, be great, be spoopy. <laughs>